In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can make $39,000 per month with a cooking channel. So make sure you watch this entire video as I show you how to get started step by step. Hello and welcome back to startthechannel.com where we show you step by step how to start a successful YouTube channel. Be sure to check out the first link in the description as I have a free checklist to help you get up and running fast. So what we're going to do today is we are going to pick a niche and we're going to niche down. I'm going to talk a little bit about why that's important. We're then we're going to talk about the necessary equipment for your new YouTube channel and how to determine your brand colors. After that, I'm going to help you get channel art and keyword research. Keyword research is going to be really important for your new YouTube channel, and I'm going to show you how to do it in two different ways. After that, we're going to talk about creating videos, how to create your thumbnails, and your upload schedule. Finally, we are going to finish this video by why you need to share your content on social media, five different ways that you can make money online, and why you should strongly consider getting a website. So be sure to check out the links in the description as they will help you get up and running. So first things first, you need to go ahead and pick a niche. Now, within the YouTube food space. There are tons of different avenues to get into. You can start a recipe blog. You can share fun food facts. You can share best food, best food from Asia, best food from Africa and Japan and so on. There's a lot of sub niches that you can get into. As you can see here, this channel, it's called Dave Hacks. There are different hacks for food. If we take a look at this one, this is a completely different type food insider. They're creating, also creating content about food. This one actually shows you how to make pesto. And then finally, we have the Sam's Sam, the cooking guy. He is showing you different ways to make food as well. This food actually looks a little bit more greasy, a little bit more unhealthy, and that's another way to go. So make sure that when you get up and running, you want to make sure that you are picking a niche and then staying there. The reason why you want to stay within your niche is if you are creating content on health food, if you're creating content on keto recipes, keto recipes, your audience is going to be turned off if you all of a sudden create a video on chimichanga. So you want to make sure that you stay there. Another niche that you could get into is called mukbang. That's basically where people eat a bunch of food and record themselves doing it. These are all considered food niches. But whatever you do, I recommend that you get in there and you pick a niche, stay within that niche, and then niche down. So let's go ahead and jump back over to the slide deck here. The next step is to talk about niching down. Now, when it comes to niching down, as you can see here, this is a large channel, so he can create content on just about anything. But if you wanted to show people how to bake a chocolate cake, you would say uh, how to bake a chocolate cake. As you can see here, this is a pretty common phrase. If we hit enter, you can see the top result has 28 million views. But did you know that you could actually niche down from creating a chocolate cake. As you can see, how to bake a chocolate cake for beginners without an oven from scratch. This is an example of niching down. How to bake a chocolate cake in an air fryer, something that I didn't know was possible, but as you can see, it is possible and the results change. Look at that, 391 subscribers, 36,000 views. So that's why you wanna niche down as a new website. You don't have any authority. You're not going to be getting people organically, so you wanna niche down. If we go back over to our slide deck, the next step is to get your necessary equipment. Now the equipment that you need really depends on the method that you go. If you are sharing fun food facts, you really don't need much equipment. However, if you are creating a recipe YouTube channel and you're showing people step by step how to bake a cake, you want to look for things like a DSLR camera, a photo editing, video editing software. And I do have a second link. The second link in the description actually lays that out step by step. Now, if you are doing voiceovers and B-roll, I recommend that you at least get a high quality microphone. Again, that second link in the description will list off the best microphones for your needs. Now, I say that to say, if you have no money to get started, use what you have. You can start with your smartphone and then upgrade over time. You can use the microphone that's included with your smartphone. It's not gonna be the best quality, but it'll help you get up and running. I recommend that you start there and then again, upgrade over time. Again, click that second link in the description. I have a list of equipment that will help you get up and running. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna figure out your brand colors. If we go back over here, I just hit back real quick. You're gonna see all of these YouTube channels have brand colors. If we look at this, uh, Food Insider has very vibrant, high quality images, and they're designed to uh, display and communicate exactly what they do. Their colors are black, white, and blue, and that's designed to show confidence and trust and let you know what you're talking about. If we look at this other site here, if we scroll up, now their colors actually will change with the holiday season. So this isn't a great example, but if we go back to the Sam's channel, 
here, you're going to see that his colors are black, red, and white. Creating a YouTube channel with brand colors shows that you are serious about YouTube. It helps you build a relationship with your audience and it's going to help you go forward. If we look at our slide deck, after you get your brand colors, you want to start thinking about your channel art. Now, when we talk about channel art, we're talking about your banner here. It's important that you create a banner and have it on your YouTube channel because people are going to learn, want to learn more about you. And in this banner, it shows you exactly what he does and how often he does it. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And he's the cooking guy. You know exactly what he does and what he's all about. And there's two ways to go about getting a banner. You can either do it yourself. You can use a site called Canva to do it yourself. So you just go to YouTube um, channel art and you're going to see there are templates that you can use. They're both free and paid templates that you can use, or you can hire someone to do it. And if you choose to hire someone to do it, you can use a website like Fiverr and go up here and use, as you can see, YouTube channel art, and they will actually create a channel banner and logo for you. Now, what you'll have to do is you'll have to give them the color palette or the, the brand colors that you're going to use. If you have no idea what to do when it comes to your colors, you can go over to the Canva color palette. And as you can see, they have a bunch of colors that are congruent that are already picked out. What you can do is just spend some time, look at these, find one that you like. And when you find one that you like, click on it. And when you click on it, the hex colors are down here for you. You just simply will copy these, maybe two or three of them, and give them to your the, the person that's creating your channel art. And it's real easy, real simple. The cool thing with using Fiverr is that it can be done within 48 hours and be as cheap as five or ten dollars but it's important that you have a consistent message and a consistent theme when it comes to your colors if we go back over to our slide deck here you want to after we get the channel art the next step is to uh, do keyword research now i showed you a little bit about keyword research and really there's two ways to do keyword research i do have a more extensive training about keyword research. It's the fourth link in the description, but there are really two ways to do it. As I showed you, one way is simply to just type in how to bake chocolate cake, and then you want to niche down. If you hit the space bar, you see that's one way. A better way to do it is to download a Chrome plugin, which I talk about in that, in that description, and it will actually have more information with regard to helping you create content. So if we go back over here, we're going to paste that. Whoops. We're going to type in how to make uh as you can see chocolate cake how to let's go how to bake a chocolate cake as you can see it actually has some ideas so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this one again how to bake a chocolate cake and it's going to give you an overall score based on your channel and it's going to give you some ideas on how to niche down so that you can target the right audience now again niching down is important because you don't have anybody coming to your channel naturally. No one knows about your channel. And so if you can create content based on keyword research, it's gonna help you start growing a little bit faster. So if we go back over to our slide deck here, we've, we've uh, done a little bit of keyword research. And again, the fourth link in the description is going to go into greater detail about how to do keyword research in the two ways that I mentioned. The next step is to simply create videos. Now, when it comes to creating content on YouTube, you either have to be entertaining or you have to be educational. Now with your food channel, you need to make a decision on which way you're going to go. If you are going to teach people different ways to make common food, for example, um, the easy chicken fajita recipe, then make sure that you are showing them how to do it step by step. You want to make sure that you have a camera pointing at the food and being very descriptive. However, if you are doing something like the food tips or food hacks, you want to make sure that you are being as entertaining as possible. As you can see, these images almost force you to click because they are uh, curiosity driven. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are either being entertaining or educating, but you want to make sure that you are solving a problem. If people want to know how to bake a cake, show them how to bake a cake step by step. Don't talk about potentially baking a cake and then show them how to cook salmon. That isn't going to work. Now, if we go back over here, the next step is to create thumbnails. Now, if you take a look at these thumbnails, as I mentioned, the key to creating good thumbnails is to generate some curiosity. If we take a look at all of these, most of these here generate some sort of curiosity. If we look at this one here, if we look at Food Insider, this one basically explains exactly what the content, what the, what the video is going to be about. As you can see, US versus UK, Ben and Jerry's, 
Food Wars. This is interesting because it has a side by side, a split screen. If we take a look at this one right here, they are showing you an image of the finished product, almost enticing you to click with large text. So you want to make sure that you are creating thumbnails that get people to click that are enticing. Now the key to creating thumbnails in the very beginning is you want to create thumbnails that are similar to what the what your market is doing. So for your food niche, if you're doing a recipe blog and they have giant text and an image of, of the finished product, that's what you want to do too. Now I'm not telling you to copy outright, but you want to make sure that you are modeling what they're doing. Modeling success is what it's called. Now there are two ways to create your thumbnails. Again, you can go back over to Canva and type in YouTube thumbnail and they will do it for you. Thumbnail. They won't do it for you, but they have a bunch of free and paid templates. You can simply just click on this one to use it and then make the necessary changes. For example, if we want to create a thumbnail about a, a recipe, we could say, let's do hamburger just like this, hit enter, and they're going to have free images. If, for example, you can't find an image here, you can actually, let's delete this. If you can't find an image, you can use a website like Pexels to find an image. So what we can do is we can simply do this just like this. And then we're going to move this to the back. Um, we'll go backwards just like this. And we could even slide this over and we can just change this to um, best burger just like that. And this actually looks pretty good. This communicates exactly what we're doing and it shows an image of a very good burger but if they don't have an image here you can find an image for free over on a website called unsplash so here we go we can type in burger hit enter and whoops we'll spell burger correctly hit enter you can see they have both photos and images when it comes to burgers now when you are creating your content if you want to use b-roll you can use this website here, pexels.com. And as I showed you, they have photos and images. If you want to use something more premium, something better and high quality, you can use a website called Storyblocks. And Storyblocks has both high definition and 4K footage. It is a premium service so that you will pay monthly. But if we type in burger here, hit enter, you can say they have all sorts of stuff that you can integrate right into your YouTube channel. Another benefit of using something like Storyblocks is they actually have a video editor right in, in their software so that you don't have to buy or pay for anything additional. Now, if we go back over to our slide deck here, the next thing that you want to ensure that you're doing is consistently creating uploading on a schedule. Now you want to be consistent over a long period of time. That is how you will find success with creating a YouTube channel. The people that struggle with YouTube struggle simply because they upload infrequently. They upload once every three weeks and then they wonder why they can't get any traction. What I recommend that you do is I recommend that you sit down and try and batch out all of your content. If you can create five videos in a day, create five videos in a day and then schedule them to upload. But I recommend that you upload at least three videos per week and you, when you first get started. Now, once you start having success and have some traction, you can pull back off of that. But start with three videos if you can. That's going to be the best case scenario. And then make sure that you follow those tips. The next thing that you want to do is share your content on social media. The reason why you want to share your content on social media in the very beginning is you won't have any audience. And in order to build an audience or one way to build an audience faster is to share your content where people already are. For example, if you have a great recipe on how to bake chocolate cake in an air fryer, share that on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn, wherever your customers are. But the key to sharing your content on social media isn't to just share it to your Facebook profile. In most instances, your friends and family aren't going to be interested in your video, you want to share it to maybe a cooking Facebook group where people are coming and sharing recipes about whatever it is. Maybe they're sharing dessert recipes and you have this great how to make a chocolate cake in an air fryer video. They might be more willing to watch that. So make sure that you are sharing it in relevant social media spaces. The next thing that you want to do is look at different ways to make money. There are at least five ways to make money and you can make a lot of money. One of the most common ways, the ways that everybody knows about is with the YouTube partner program. And simply with the YouTube partner program, you need to have 
1,000 subscribers, and 4,000 watch hours to qualify for the program. Now, just because you qualify for the program doesn't guarantee that you'll get in. It's just a minimum qualification. Now, in my opinion, the YouTube Partner Program, while great, is the lowest way, the least amount of money that you can make. One of the great ways to make money is simply with affiliate marketing. And with affiliate marketing, you are recommending or selling other people's products and services. And the key to affiliate marketing is simply recommending products that are congruent or in line with your target audience. For example, if you are creating a video on how to bake a chocolate cake, one of the most common things that they may need is a stand mixer. And you could be an affiliate for Amazon and recommend a bunch of different stand mixers. When people click on those affiliate links and make a purchase, you get paid a commission, but that's just one way. Another good way to make money is to start a Patreon account. With Patreon, you can offer exclusive membership rights and access, or maybe it's something that they're not able to get over on YouTube. Another way that you can make money is with email marketing. Now, email marketing will actually help you make money in a few different ways. The cool thing with email marketing is once someone subscribes to your email list, they will be on your list forever until they unsubscribe or you manually delete them. Now you can make money with email marketing in a few ways. One, anytime you upload a brand new video, you send out an email to your list and let them know that you've uploaded a brand new video. Two, you can also send them affiliate offers. As I mentioned with the stand mixer, maybe the stand mixer just went on sale for Black Friday. You send them an email, they buy the stand mixer, you get paid a commission. Another way that you can make money is to sell your own physical and digital products. Maybe you have your own cookbook that you've created. You can sell that right from your YouTube channel and make money that way. There are a number of ways to make money with your YouTube channel and it is a very good opportunity. So if we jump back over on our slide deck here, the final step while optional, I think you should do it, is to get a website. Now, the reason why I think you need to have a website is if YouTube were to disappear tomorrow, if your channel got deleted or hacked, you would have to start over. However, if you have a website, you won't be starting off from scratch. Creating a website allows you to have additional revenue streams. You can add ads right to your website. You can sell products from your website and it's a good base of operations. You can start a blog and get organic traffic that way, and you can send people to your YouTube channel and back and forth right from your website as well as your YouTube channel. So while it's an optional step, I do recommend that you get a website. Now be sure to check out the links in the description. The first link is to a free checklist, a free YouTube checklist. The second link is for uh, the necessary equipment for your YouTube channel. The third link is channel art and branding and colors and all that good stuff. The next, the fourth link is how to do keyword research step by step. And then the fifth link is for different ways to make money. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell if this video or any other video on this channel helped you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.